Stewart versus Rusty Crowder. Everything's very similar right here. Only thing difference is the weight. Rusty Crowder did not make weight. And that's hard to tell. Was it because he didn't train hard enough? Was there something going on where he couldn't make weight? Not real sure. He might utilize that if he wants to get in and lean on his opponent or met me to say he's, he's not in shape. We're going to have to find out here, Sean, but weight could be the key factor in this fight. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for our feature fight of the night scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the featherweight division presented to you by blue chew introducing to you first fighting out of the red corner tonight he wears black trimmed in gold silver and red he stands five feet nine inches tall his official weight 150.3 pounds he holds a veterans bare knuckle record of four victories opposite three defeats Fighting out of Villa Rica, Georgia. Here is Rowdy Rusty Crowder. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears white. He stands five feet, eight inches tall. His official weight, 145.9 pounds. He holds an undefeated bare knuckle record at two and oh. Fighting out of Great Falls, Montana. Here is the undefeated, the outcast, Kai Hefty Bag Stu. And our referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Mergliata. Rusty Crowder, who has a very measured personality, has really been bothered by Kai Stewart. He said he's overconfident, he's never fought anyone at my level, and I'm not concerned with anything that he has. Round number one, white trucks for Kai Stewart, black trucks for Rusty Crowder. On this separation, Dan Mergliata immediately taking charge. Didn't like the way he threw after he said break. It's a pretty rough win for Mogulata. The jab from Kai Stewart on the entry. Crowder with the right hand, left hand. Every right negated by Crowder. Good defense, right hand. It's in the step of Kai Stewart. You see the head movement. Crowder pulling the right hand back. Overhand right misses from Kai Stewart. 40 seconds gone, round one of our future bout. Surprise, Crowder standing more in the middle than usual. He blocked that time by Kai Stewart with the left forearm. <laughs> Swing and a miss on the entry right from Stewart. You can really tell right now that Crowder's just looking to wait for his right time to counter him. From Kai Stewart. Switch step, left hand. Really worked. The idea was that from Kai Stewart. Crowder showing his professionalism, his experience, his composure. Ten years older than Stewart at age 32. The right hand misses. Stewart should play out. Smear of blood on the face of Kai Stewart. Let's see how Stewart deals with that. Hasn't had to deal with that adversity yet in this sport. Stewart's cut inside of his right brow. Overhand right misses badly from Stewart. Crowder bringing this fight to the tempo that he wants, not the high-paced tempo that Stewart wants. Stewart again, no success, no joy on that overhand right. Final seconds, round number one. Right hand from Rusty Crowder. Overhand right back from Stewart, did not Crowder coming forward again into the pocket. Counter right hand, right hand, then right back from Rusty Crowder. The bell, that's the end of round one. The main thing with that, you can just tell the level of confidence that Rusty Crowder had. He was very calm, very patient, very relaxed in that first round. <laughs> felt like everything that Kai Stewart went to throw, Rusty Crowder is in. You know, bothered by it all, felt very relaxed, nice, slow pace with blocks. He came back and waited for the right time to throw a bone punch. You can just see the look in the face. Right? Rusty Crowder is very good defensively, very good with his movement. Yeah. 
to do something to get him off that defensive line. Either Bates get inside and push him around and hit on the break. He talked about that. Move his opponent, hit him on the break. I didn't see him able to do that one time. Both fighters up to scratch. Look, look. A little up from Dan Mergliata. Round number two underway. We like bolo punch from Crowder. Didn't land. Wow, Crowder. We talked about him being bothered. Uncharacteristic for Crowder. Talking to Kai Stewart. Just put his hands down around, around his waist right there and there is the point to come into it. And hands right there where Stewart needs to work. To the clinch, right hand, and the exit left. You can just tell Crowder doesn't have much respect for the power of Stewart. Crowder again trying to throw that rear right bowler punch. Big swings, big misses thus far from Kai Stewart. 125 remaining round two. Stewart up for jab. Crowder backs him up with the jab. Different style of fighting for Russell Crowder right now. And right in the middle. Usually he's the guy back pulling the move around. Let's do it again, coming forward again, missing. And proving to be a relatively elusive target. 60 seconds remaining in round number two. Jab from Crowder overhand right off the mark. Big swings now, big misses from Rusty Crowder. Right to the body. Right cross that landed for Kai Stewart. That'd be a good thing for Stewart to do. He's having trouble landing to the head because Rusty Crowder is so elusive. But you know what's not going to move very well is that body. So go to the body, slow him down, then move up towards that field. But flowing freely, cut inside of Stewart's right brow, which opened in round number one. Come on, pedal lateral movement now from Kai Stewart. It was Crowder who told us in our fighter meeting, I can't stand directly in front of Kai Stewart. It's Crowder now pushing forward centrally, trying to beat this fight. Just took the 10-second clack. Early to the end of round number two, overhand right just misses from Crowder. Stewart still coming forward off the jab, right hand. Next stop, round three. Not a lot of respect between these guys still. You can see right there how that round did it. Right here you can see good job right now. Crowder landed that left hand right to the chin of Kai Stewart. Tried to come back with it again. Kai Stewart entered the ring before the introduction from Jeff Houston. He ran by Crowder's corner. They've covered the double middle finger. You can see here a little split in the judges right there. Two of the judges giving that round to Crowder, one of them giving it to Kai Stewart. The judging has been great tonight. Real time scoring again. Those are the actual three judges' official scorecards. We know it. The corners, the fighters, they know it as well, round by round. Innovation in combat sports and David Feldman <laughs> back bare knuckle fighting championship. I agree more, son. You can tell Kai Stewart feels a little bit of a sense of urgency right now. He's stepping up his game right now, coming with more punches. Stewart was telling Mogliata he was poked in the eye, but didn't want time. We fight on. I think he feels like he has superior cardio. He only wants to push the pace as much as possible. First switch stance is Kai Stewart. A lot of movement from Stewart. You're not seeing a lot of landing to this stage in the fight. Crowder big swings walking down Stewart now into the clinch overhead right. Back from Kai Stewart right hand not there. Total strikes landed right there. You can see Crowder not landing nearly as many, but a much more. Right here number five. There's the jab from Kai Stewart. Right hand to the body. Once again, Kai being much more active, you can feel he has that sense of urgency. I'm losing this fight. I gotta change the way things are going. He's doing right now. Jab to the body, jab to the head. Slick sequence from Kai Stewart. Now they're trying to work off of his own one. Takes the overhand right. I think we'll find a Russell Crowder in position. We don't want to see him trying to be the aggressor. Here, Crowder walking forward to the center circle. Stewart, another change right to the body. Stewart, ever so subtly starting to land punches to Crowder's body. 20 seconds remaining round three. Overhand right, right there. Stiff jab from Kai 
Ross do it. And those punches that were once easy for Wesley Proud of the block are starting to get through now. Better initiating that clinch. Good turn from Ty Stewart. Crowder with the left hand. Now the right hand. Another left hand. Counter right hand. That's the end of round three. Much better round right there for Ty Stewart. Felt like he wasn't getting off nearly enough. And so he decided, I'm going to step up. I'm getting being the first to the punch and the last. That's what he's talking about. Going for. I don't know who the person who throws first, but the person who throws last. The action, really jab being there by Kyle Stewart right there. What right about that right hand? And when Rusty Crowder came in, just a nice little turnaround there by Kyle Stewart. That's probably one of the best little uh, parts of the entire fight right there. Elusive, not getting hit for Kyle Stewart. Blood in the eye of Dan Bergliata at the end of the round. <laughs> not the first time, won't be the last time. Three judges gave that round to Kai Stewart. No surprise right there. That tightens things up quite a bit right there. We have two of the judges have a one round, a one point ahead for Russell Crowder. The other judge has it one, one point for Kai Stewart right now. Round number four. Snap jab right hand. Crowder misses with the right hand. Left to the body. Crowder holding on to the tie prom. Half tie prom with the right hand, but he's not throwing. Stewart to the body. Overhook being held by Crowder. Now the separation from Mogliano. It's as long, I think, in BKFC history as we've seen someone hold a half tie point without throwing a punch. <laughs> Crowder was almost happy to take those punches from Kai Stewart. Kai Stewart really is trying to take this fight over right now. That's Crowder. Trying to get a moral victory, just feeling that Stewart not hurting him to the body, trying to be demoralizing. You see there are a lot more 100 punches being thrown to the head, 42 landings for 42 percent. Very good job done by Kyle Stewart. There's a hand right from Stewart. Left hands. Now time called by Mergliotta. Stewart coming who was poked in the right eye. That was like when he called a hand. Taking the air and finger from Rusty Crowder to the eye. So pops up from Crowder. Diving in now, Kai Stewart. 30 seconds remaining, round number four of our feature fight. This has been quality in the featherweight division. Good job, all right. Three left hook now from Rusty Crowder. Short right hand on the right uppercut. This is a very close fight. Get off the jab, goes Stewart. Crowder parrying that jab. Leaping left hook on the entry for Rusty Crowder. Right hand not getting through, definitely blocked by Crowder. Crowder looking for the snap jab, coming forward. Jack left hook lands by Crowder. Left to the body from Stewart. Stewart throws from some very creative angles, and they often land. We move to the fifth and final round. Right? I think we might be tied up here, so we might come down to the very last round. This round is for all the marbles. This round is for all the Crowder looks very tired right now, and Kai Stewart is just out working him. So Rusty Crowder is going to have to dig deep, really utilize the movement right now, get in, tie up, push Kai Stewart around, do whatever he has to do to win this last round. Kai Stewart needs to keep doing this, to be active, move around. As we, guys, this is what I thought, Sean. It's going to be tied up in two judges. One judge is going to have it by two points for the Kaiser. So whoever wins this last round can win the fight. And this is truly the beauty of real time sports. Rusty Crowder. 
Yeah. One hand right on the entry from Stewart. Good left hook from Crowder. And more urgency from Crowder. Right hand coming forward. He goes swings now from Crowder. That's clearly a push, clearly a slip. But without a showing the knee tap. Great call right there. No argument. No controversy there. That was clear. Rights to the body from Stewart again. Crowder holding that half tie point without throwing. Active clinch, Margliano allowing a good turn from Stewart in the left hand. Left hand right back from Rusty Crowder. Right, no that tie point with that clinch right there. Well done by Kai Stewart utilizing that the entire time. To the clinch. See the S grip snatched by Crowder. He wants out of the clinch. He gets it. Smart from Crowder. Rip gets you out of the clinch. Good hook jab from Rusty Crowder. Just turn that over. And that's what Crowder needs to do. Move, circle, keep it back in the middle. He can't keep getting against that rope. He just misses with the right hand. Leaping left entry for Crowder. Stewart looking for the jab to the body. Continuing to show his creativity. Duck under from Ty Kai Stewart. Into the clinch down the right hand from the pocket. Again, the S yes, grip from Rusty Crowder gets the separation from Ogunata. Crowder's making it clear he does not want to play in the clinch in the fifth and final round. That's very smart. He doesn't, shouldn't want to right now because he's losing in there. He's getting out of work. Still coming forward again off the jab. There's the one right back from Rusty Crowder. Rusty Crowder can put together a little floor right where he can steal this round. Down the stretch now. It comes down to this round. Both fighters going to the left. There's the right hand from Ty Stewart. Into the clinch. The turn from Stewart. Overhand right. That is the end of the fight. And that's a nice moment between these two fighters. And this is going to be very interesting to see what's going to be decided right there. Is it going to be the person pushing forward or the clear punch? So in real-time scoring, the corners are given the scores. The three judges, their official scores round by round, but not to the last round, so there is suspense here. Neither fighter will know the result until it is read by Jeff Houston. This is a real crossroads fight for both men. Quality at 145 pounds. Crowder's showing his persistence. Normally a fighter who is comfortable looking to counter stay outside. Definitely was more aggressive than we've seen him in his seven previous bouts in BKFC. And Stewart, who entered undefeated at 2-0 in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, showing that creativity, showing that flair. Both fighters both definitely had their moments. They await along with us, along with this sold-out crowd here at the Four Seasons Arena in Great Falls, Montana. And if Stewart gets the victory, it will absolutely explode. Jeff Houston is set to end all suspects. We send it to him now. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the decision, let's have a round of applause for these two featherweight warriors. After completing the scheduled five rounds, our judges send into the squared circle a split decision. Jamie St. Marks scores the fight 48-47 in favor of Crowder. Mike McCalman, 49-46 in favor of Stewart. And Gabriel Yellow Owl, 48-47 to the winner by split decision. The Outcast, Kai F.T. Bag Stewart.
Falls. Great Falls, we all know who the winner and champion of the 145 pound division is. Let's go! Kai, very tough first couple rounds you were losing. Looked like the game plan was to wear him down and just outpoint him. Is that what it was? Absolutely. I am a wrestler, and wrestlers will always do it best. Woo! Hey, you're one of our youngest competitors here, 3 and 0. Oh, you think you're ready to step up the next competition? If so, who you want to fight? Well, I know somebody's injured, but you can send anyone you want. But don't send anyone you want back. I'm number one, baby! Congratulations on a great fight. Thanks. Rusty Crowder fought phenomenally well. He won it on one of the three judges' scorecards, the other two seeing it for Kai Stewart. It came down to the final round, and it was brilliant throughout. The winner, by way of split decision, Kai Stewart defeats Rusty Crowder. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all new library of content, including behind the scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship presents BKFC 44, Friday, June 9th. In the main event, a world champion will be crowned as the number one ranked Kai Hefty Bag Stewart knuckles up with the number two ranked Louis L. Loco Lopez. In the co-main event, Dallas Davidson tries to get back on the winning track against the undefeated Lloyd Cupcake Mix. Watch it live on the BKFC app. Download it at BKFC.com. We continue now to our feature fight of the evening. Crescent Tools brings you the numbers for this bout in the featherweight division. Howard Davis versus Louis Lopez. You can see here a few inch height advantage for Howard Davis. Three inch reach advantage. He's going to utilize that. Louis Lopez wants to come in and throw bombs, throw hard shots. Howard Davis got a very good one too. Wants to keep Louis Lopez at bay with that stiff jab and that too. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now set for our feature fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Presented to you by Crescent Tools. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears white and black. He stands five feet, nine inches tall. His official weight, an even 146 pounds. His bare knuckle record stands at four victories opposite a single defeat. Fighting out of Great Falls, Montana. Here it is. Louis El Loco Lopez. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears the proud colors of Jamaica. He stands six feet, two inches tall. His official weight, 145.4 pounds. He is undefeated at 3-0 with one fight even. Fighting out of Broward County. charge of the action, Kerry Hatley. Howard Davis told us, I want to record and knock out, but what would give me the most satisfaction is a body shot knockout against Louis Lopez. Round number one. Black trucks for Howard Davis, white trucks for Louis Lopez. Blood-stained white trucks for Louis Lopez. Yeah, I noticed that. He didn't watch him. I think he wants people to see that play. Two very tall 45ers, Davis six foot two, Lopez five foot ten. Long stiff jab from Howard Davis. He's on the feints, takes that left hand. John, I saw Lopez in the late room warming up today, throwing very hard punches. Short right hand by Lopez, that one is slick. It's on the entry, now into the clinch, double under hooks. Right, 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 right. right. Separation. Ball four received by referee Kerry Hatley. Get into the clinch. 
Hadley's working there. Seconds remaining round number one. Good referee from Hadley. Make this flow over right now. Snatched by Lopez. And activity in that draw. Long time separation from Hadley. Stiff jab from Davis. Physician calls a stop to this fight at the conclusion of round number one. For your winner, by TKO, Louis Lopez. 
huge huge victory for Louis Lopez definitely gets him in a title fight came out throwing hard punches very composed best we've seen Louis Lopez look so far two of the best featherweights on the BKFC roster in our feature fight very hard fought in round number one Davis taking that horrific slice in his right eyelid and this fight could not safely continue in the view of Dr. Don Muzi. The winner by way of first round TKO due to physician stoppage, Louis Lopez defeats Howard Davis. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all new library of content, including behind the scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship presents BKFC 44, Friday, June 9th. In the main event, a world champion will be crowned as the number one ranked Kai Hefty Bag Stewart knuckles up with the number two ranked Louis L. Loco Lopez. In the co-main event, Dallas Davidson tries to get back on the winning track against the undefeated Lloyd Cupcake Mix. Watch it live on the BKFC app. Download it at BKFC.com. Feature fight time in the middleweight division. Lloyd Mix versus Brett Fields. Our tale of the tape is presented by Karma Coin. Looking at the tale of the tape here, the main difference is a three-inch reach advantage for Lloyd Mix. Lloyd knows how to utilize that. He's been a fighter for a long time. Fields more has had quite as many fights, but he's very intense. Really knows this is a huge opportunity for him. This is going to be not necessarily about reach, but who's able to implement their game plan, I believe. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Presented to you by Karma Coin. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears blue and white. He stands at even six feet tall. His official weight, 174.5 pounds. Tonight, he makes his bare-knuckle debut. Fighting out of Crown Point, Indiana, by way of Chicago Heights, Illinois. Here is Brett Da Beast Fields. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears blue. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall. His official weight, an identical 174.5 pounds. He is an MMA veteran of 21 fights and makes his bare-knuckle debut tonight. Fighting out of Missoula. Montana! Here is Lloyd Cupcake Mix! And our referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Mergliata. Lloyd Mix said, I'm embracing, the, I'm embracing the unknown in this bout. I don't know anything about this sport. I don't know anything about my opponent. I don't know how the new me is going to react as a fighter. We will now find out round number one. Black and white trunks for Brett Fields. Remember, blue and white trunks, I beg your pardon for Brett Fields. I told you I struggled with the colors, Chris. Blue trunks for Lloyd Mix. so intrigued to fight in bare knuckle fighting championship and here it is waiting for the perfect opportunity just a perfectly paced punch we talked about that accuracy is so important here and that was it we 
And hear the ovation for Lloyd Mix in his home state, Montana. Check left hook. Field said this was his rocky moment, but Lloyd Mix, but before Cupcake was announced as the Count of Monte Fisto. Showed what, he showed why right there. He's waiting for the opportunity. His opponent threw a naked left hook. Countered. And Lloyd Mix channeling Apollo Creed with that <laughs> left hand. <laughs> the Count of Monte Fisto, there you go. Brett Fields back to his feet. Sporting ovation for Fields. And the triumphant ovation for Lloyd Mix. Once again, we talked about that thrill of victory, agony of defeat. It's all over those guys' faces right there. Here is Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Big Dan Mergliata, steps in and calls a stop to this fight at 14 seconds into round number one for your winner by KO, Lloyd Cupcake Mix. I mean, what a debut for Lloyd Mix. I hope he decides he wants to continue this. He looked fantastic out there, relaxed, calm, accurate with his punches. Uh, I can't wait to see him fight again. Hopefully he stays with him. Lloyd Mix was one of my favorite people when we were both in Bellator. He was fighting, I was commentating. He was very emotional in coming back to fighting. He didn't know if he still had it. He answered that question. Lloyd Mix, phenomenal in his BKFC debut. Check left hook. And the win, one punch knockout in 14 seconds. Victorious by way of first round KO. In our feature fight of the evening, Lloyd Mix defeats Brett Fields. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship presents BKFC 44, Friday, June 9th. In the main event, a world champion will be crowned as the number one ranked Kai Hefty Bag Stewart knuckles up with the number two ranked Louis L. Loco Lopez. In the co-main event, Dallas Davidson tries to get back on the winning track against the undefeated Lloyd Cupcake Mix. Watch it live on the BKFC app. Download it at BKFC.com. Dallas Davison versus Eric Lopez. You see the numbers there presented by Crescent Tool. The thing here, the reach is exactly the same. Davis does have a height advantage, but I think the main difference is this weight advantage. You can see about a nine pound, almost nine pound weight advantage for Dallas Davis. So he's going to want to utilize that size and push the smaller, lighter Eric Lopez around, wear him down that way, and look to win this fight in the later rounds. gentlemen and welcome to the Four Seasons Arena here in Great Falls, Montana! And welcome to the most exciting combat sport on planet Earth brought to you by BKFC 24! We are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Presented to you by Crescent Tools. Introducing you first, fighting out the red corner. Tonight, he wears black and gold. He stands five feet, seven inches tall. His official weight, 175.8 pounds. He is undefeated as a bare-knuckle fighter at 3-0 and makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Dylan Mar Montana. Here is the undefeated Eric Lights Out Lopez. And across.
across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black trimmed in green. He stands at even six feet tall. His official weight, an even 174 pounds. He stands uncontested as a bare knuckle fighter at 2 0. Fighting out of Great Falls, Montana. Here is the undefeated Dallas Davison. And our referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Merkliana. Montana has an inactive athletic commission, so the Kansas Athletic Commission is regulating tonight's event. They've assigned the three judges who are scoring on the 10-point bus system. This and all bouts this evening are scheduled for five two-minute rounds. Both fighters up to scratch. Round number one. Black trucks for Dallas Davison. Black and gold trucks for Eric Lopez. Forward pressure immediately from Dallas Davison. Big swing with the left hand. Huge uppercut. Lopez now throwing back to the body and back, backs off Davison. Davison with the long jab. Dallas Davison is coming out with a wild punch, not wild, I should say, but his powerful shots really want to hurt his opponent. He left hook from Davison just off the mark. Heavy forward pressure now off the one from Dallas Davison in the orthodox stance. Lopez missing with that rear right uppercut. Back to the jab for Eric Lopez. You know, Sean, I know it said they had the same reach, but it doesn't look like it right now. Dallas Davis seems like he has a much bigger reach advantage. Davis in. Modified lead left hook. Still the walk down pressure. It was the naked two thrown from Lopez. Short clubbing right hand lands from Davison. Davison circling out. 65 seconds remaining. Round number one of this middleweight bout. Leaping it with the left hook. Into the clinch. Lopez had a good opportunity to, to throw some body shots. He looked like he didn't know you were allowed to do that. He just turned his opponent and pushed him away. Soft warning from referee Dan Mergliata. Big right hand and down goes Lopez. Popping up and taking the mandatory eight count from Mergliata. You can tell by the way Lopez is bouncing. Doesn't look like it hurt him much, but it definitely knocked him down. Let's see if Davison tries to go for the finish right now. The left hook leaping so Dallas Davison. Davison, short left hand. Just before Lopez was dropped, he was given a soft warning by Mergliata. Excessive holding in the clinch. Okay, it has to be an active clinch, and then you can throw if you're new to paired up with fighting. Final seconds, round number one. Stiff left jab from Dallas Davison. <laughs> Lopez can't get off with that rear right uppercut. There is the bell, the end of the opening round. And that round was very one-sided, Rosa. You could tell Lopez needs to change this up a little bit. He continues to just back away. He can't do that if he wants to win this fight. You have to be offensive. Both punches caught him, man. That straight right followed by the hook. It was that two-three combination, the right. Stunned him and the, the, made the left hook get through there. So when the left hook got through, just landed perfect, knocked him off balance. With the Kansas Athletic Commission in charge, they bring with them the outstanding real-time scoring. So if you're new to that, that means that not only on the broadcast, but we know the actual three judges round-by-round round scores. More importantly, and this is what it was designed for primarily, the fighters in their corners are given the scores between every round so they know that Davison, to the surprise of none, that that first round knockdown is up 10-8 going into round two. I mean, and look at Dallas right now, just playing up at the crowd. Round number two. Davison missing with the overhand right. Short right hand by Lopez. Lopez trying to work off the jab. There's that left hook from Dallas Davison. And Lopez is, is backing up the entire time. He has got to do something to earn the respect of Dallas Davison. Davison with the rear right uppercut. Lopez trying to throw back in a flurry. It's now from Davison. Huge overhand. Sequence. Six. Lopez is being overmatched right now. Doesn't have the firepower to come back right now. He needs to throw some hard punches and earn the respect of Dallas Davison. He's going to be in for a long night, or maybe a short one. See the open hand parries from Eric Lopez. Playing a lot of defense right now is Davison playing almost all offense. You 
can see right now the look in Eric Lopez's face. I'm not sure if he wants it anymore. He says no, well, he's done. Eric Lopez shaking his head no to Dan Mergliotta. And just like that, Dallas Davidson now 2-0 and and bare knuckle fighting championship. Offensive display we saw right there, Sean. He continued to come forward the entire time. Complete disregard for his opponent's ability to, to hurt him, and he, he was right. He just continued to come forward and, and push the pace and do hard punches. If you continue to do that, you're going to win a lot of fights. And it was just that last punch. You could just tell at that point, Lopez was kind of already mentally done. In our fighter meeting, Chris, Dallas Davison said to us, one of my keys to victory is I can't move straight backwards. He hardly took a backward step in that entire fight. I don't know if he took one. I think he was coming forward and pressing the, the pace the entire time. Credit to Eric Lopez in his BKFC debut. He was game. He came forward. He was in form and bare knuckle again, 3-0 with one no contest, but simply could not get his offense going. Dallas Davison was sharp. The knockdown in round number one and two knockdowns to the finish in round number two. was very honest in his assessment of this fight. He said, I respect Dallas Davison. He's tough. I don't think that I can knock him out. I think I can outbox him over five rounds. Again, he just simply could not get his hands going. We send it to Jeff Houston. Thank you, bro. Thank you, man. Ladies and gentlemen, the red corner calls a stop to this fight at one minute and eight seconds into round number two for your winner by TKO and still undefeated, Dallas! Davis! Dallas moves to 3 0 on a fantastic performance. The confidence is just getting more and more. He knows he can hurt people. He knows what he can do. And the more experienced this guy, the better he gets. I like seeing this guy fight every time. Great energy. Emphatic entrance and an emphatic performance in the bare knuckle ring for Dallas Davison. Overwhelming Eric Lopez with precision as well as power. The winner by way of second round knockout, Dallas Davison defeats Eric Lopez. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship presents BKFC 44, Friday, June 9th. In the main event, a world champion will be crowned as the number one ranked Kai Hefty Bag Stewart knuckles up with the number two ranked Louis L. Loco Lopez. In the co-main event, Dallas Davidson tries to get back on the winning track against the undefeated Lloyd Cupcake Mix. Watch it live on the BKFC app. Download it at BKFC.com. Kai Stewart versus Daniel Gary. As you can see here, Sean, very similar in every aspect except for height. Not too much of a factor right there. I think the reach is more important, very even right there. So I don't think that's going to be much of a factor in this fight. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Presented to you by Onnit. Total Human Optimization. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears black and red. He stands five feet four inches tall. His official weight, 144.2 pounds. He steps into the squared circle for the second time. Fighting out of Lawrence, South Carolina. Here is Daniel Black Mamba. Across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears white and gold. He stands five feet, eight inches tall. His official weight, 145.9 pounds. He is undefeated at 1-0. and oh, Fighting out of Great Falls, Montana. Here is Kai 
hefty bag, Stewart! And our referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Mergliata. The current college wrestler, Kai Stewart, versus the former college wrestler, Daniel Gary, with cool as you like. Main eventer, Lorenzo Hunt, in the corner of Daniel Gary. Oh, by the way, he has his first title defense coming up later tonight. That's how calm Lorenzo Hunt is. Round number one. White trucks for Kai Stewart, black trucks for Daniel Gary. Through the right hand from Kai Stewart just off the mark. Gary's got to be careful. He's palm out with that left hand. Overhand right is open. Counter right hand and fully land from Gary. Gary very much in a wrestler's stance. Lead left hook from Stewart. Inside right back out. Stewart, that's a clubbing left hand. Gary, trying to move, trying to be active. Gary continuing to duck that head right there. He's open for an uppercut. You can see Kai Stewart sees that. He's trying to land that uppercut. If you duck your head, if you can hear that up, it's going to be over. Rights to the head, rights to the body. You see Stewart playing to the crowd, sticking out his tongue. Big right hand on the overhand from Stewart. There's the uppercut. Down goes Daniel Carey. And that was an uppercut that was inside. It wasn't caught from him ducking from the outside. But an uppercut all the same. And look at this crash on unbelievable support. And right now, a little bit of mayhem going on right now. Unfortunately, Gary doesn't really understand what's happening. He thinks he's still fighting and having to calm him down. Sometimes that happens. You literally lose time as a fighter. And the next thing you know, there's someone standing in front of you. It's the referee. But in your mind, it's your opponent. You see that so many times at the UFC level where a guy starts attacking the ref and starts trying to put him in a triangle choke or something. It's like, hey, this fight's been over for about 10 seconds. Same thing happened right here. Gary's an extremely good guy. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't attack the, anybody. But he's just confused right now. But, see the way he had that, hood, that head cup through that uppercut. Here it is right here in a second. You're going to see grab the back of that head in perfect pop. All it took was a little punch. You had the head pulled down. You have that magnified by the time you, you push that right hand up. Shades of our good friend Chris Lieben. Uppercut from the half tie plum to the finish for Kai Stewart. Now 2-0 and with emphasis in BKFC. see the frustration on Daniel Gary's face right now, just devastated right there. He put so much into this fight, so much into the training camp, all to have it over so quickly. It's just a devastating feeling right now. Being controlled by Lorenzo Hunt, again you will see Hunt in his first fight as champion of BKFC's 185-pound division versus Joe Diesel Riggs in our main event. Huge disappointment for Daniel Gary. And a big win for Kai Stewart here in his home city, Great Falls, Montana. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Big Dan Margliata, calls a stop to this fight at 1 minute 10 seconds into round number one for your winner by KO Kai FT Bang Stewart. Sean, like you talked about there, possible star in the making right now. Kai Stewart, another fantastic display. Shows he's really been working on becoming a star here at BKFC. Well, if he wasn't the coolest kid at the University of Providence <laughs> before, he certainly is now. Showmanship, technique, and pure power. The winner by way of first round knockout, Kai Stewart defeats Daniel Gary.
Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship presents BKFC 44, Friday, June 9th. In the main event, a world champion will be crowned as the number one ranked Kai Hefty Bag Stewart knuckles up with the number two ranked Louis L. Loco Lopez. In the co-main event, Dallas Davidson tries to get back on the winning track against the undefeated Lloyd Cupcake Mix. Watch it live on the BKFC app. Download it at BKFC.com.
Friday Championship is brought to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Welcome to Big Sky Country, Great Falls, Montana. The scenery is spectacular, and tonight, the fights are going to be as breathtaking as the views. We start with the free view. First three bare knuckle fights are 100% on us. Some wild scraps to get you ready for tonight's pay-per-view. Co-main event tonight, 2-1 Dallas Davison. Doesn't know how to have a boring fight. Tonight, he locks horns with a true MMA vet and 1-0 bare knuckle fighter, Lloyd Cupcake Mix. It's been 40 years since Montana has had a combat sports world champion. But tonight, one of Montana's best featherweights will enter the history books. Louis Lopez and Kai Stewart are on a collision course in our main event. Featherweight championship is on the line. And welcome to the Four Seasons Arena right here in the Electric City, Great Falls, Montana. Yes, indeed, we are back to the great state of Montana. Every time we come here, we expect craziness out of this crowd and we expect incredible fights inside of the ring. You're going to see that tonight. We start with the free view, three big fights to kind of give you that taste. Just once you give you that taste, you gotta have more. You're gonna want that pay-per-view. That's where you gotta go, to the official BKFC app. There, you're gonna drop $7.99. You're gonna get tonight's event. Then on top of that, in two weeks, you're also going to get our next event in Hollywood, Florida, June 23rd, that's BKFC. 45. $7.99, you get all that in a bag of chips. Be able to get some merchandise, be able to watch all of our old fights. BKFC 41 from Denver. Conor McGregor inside of our ring. You can see all that right there on the BKFC app. Folks, it's that time. A lot of folks here in Great Falls are talking about this very night. So let's head down to our commentary team, Sean Wheelock and Chris Lytle. Now, Sean. Let's talk about this main event. Not only do we have the inaugural BKFC Featherweight Championship of the World on the line, these guys generally hate each other. And I'm not mincing words. Really don't like each other. What a fight in our main event. Cyrus, that is a very accurate assessment. <laughs> there is genuine animosity between Kai Stewart and Louis Lopez. Both live here in Great Falls, Montana. Both have a massive supporting section in attendance tonight. Friends, family, former classmates, both grew up here. This fight is massive for both men, for the city of Great Falls, for the state of Montana. Aside from all the animosity when these two former training partners meet, the winner will become the inaugural BKFC 145 pound world champion. And now, Chris, I have to ask you because you're a resident expert. You know the odds. You know how to do a little bit of gambling. So if you want to make the night very interesting, obviously you hook up with our folks at DraftKings, but when you take a look at the odds, what jumps out at you? A lot of good fights out there, a lot of money to be made. Looking around right now, the one that really jumps out at me, Dorian Long, minus 160. If I were betting, that's where I'm throwing all my money. All right, Chris. Now, listen, if you want to make things interesting, it's very simple. DraftKings has got you covered. You get a $50 bonus bet for a deposit of $5 or more for new customers. Scan the QR code. It's right there on your screen. And punch in the promo code BKFC44. Now let's take a look at the rules brought to you by MIT45. All fights are scheduled for five two-minute rounds. Fights are scored by three judges on a 10-point must system. Hand wraps must be at least one inch below the bare knuckles. Punching in the clinch is allowed. No three knockdown rule. No being saved by the bell in any round. No kicks, knees, elbows, takedowns, or submissions. And now let's go to our first Crescent Tools Tale of the Tape. We open at 135 pounds, Drake Holes versus David Laredo. And Sean, if you look here, you have a three inch height advantage for David Laredo. However, the reach being the same, I don't think the height advantage is that much of an advantage. Sometimes I like to be the shorter guy. I think we have a very even fight here on paper. David Laredo set for his bare knuckle fighting championship debut. Laredo has had one pro MMA bout, two in pro boxing. 
In our fighter meeting, he told us he prides himself on having an extremely aggressive style. Laredo said, I want to be quick off of scratch and close the distance rapidly. I like it, Sean. He had a good game plan. He said he wants to start off with a jab a lot in the first round, then second round, and wants to get inside, make it dirty, wants to utilize powerful, smart fighting. Laredo said, I'm going to throw a lot of leaping left hooks. He said, I'm not going to be happy with the decision win versus Dre Coles in this bout. He said, I'm going to go hard, take chances to record a spectacular knockout. Well, and he said another thing that made me think he's been a student of this, understands he said he needs to mix up his punches. He can't be predictable, 100% accurate. When you are predictable, easy to stop. But when you mix it up, you throw different combinations, some right hand leads, it's different things. It's much harder to stop. He understands that. Of his opponent, Drake Holes in this bantamweight bout, David Laredo said, I think he has good wrestling. He's going to keep switching stances. Laredo said, I think Coles switches stances without a lot of forethought. When he does so, I'm going to land big shots in that interim. That's one of his things. He feels like that power, but he also says he understands defense. He has to have good head movement if he wants to use, win this fight. The moment is at hand for 20-year-old Dre Coles. Set for his pro combat sports debut, 12 years younger than his opponent in this bout, David Laredo. Coles currently a college student, and he is a wrestler at the NAI level, the University of Providence here in Great Falls, Montana. Coles 6-0 in MMA, 1-0 in amateur boxing. In our fighter meeting, he said, I'm going to use my speed to continually look to counter strike. Every time Laredo lands, I'm going to fire right back. Great advice. I really thought it was interesting. He said he wants to stay long. These guys have the same range. Feels like he's faster, can utilize that range. Coming out, laying good shots, wants to utilize angles. But the main thing, he wants to make sure he's not getting bullied in there. To get BKFC 44 started, we send it to the always outstanding Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the Four Seasons Arena here in Great Falls, Montana. And we welcome you to BKFC 44. BKFC preview begins tonight with five two-minute rounds in the bantamweight division presented to you by Crescent Tools. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner, tonight he wears green. He stands 5 feet 9 inches tall, his official weight, 135.9 pounds. He holds a combined combat sports record of three fights, and tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Henderson, Nevada, here is David the Immortal Goat. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears blue. He stands 5 feet 6 inches tall. His official weight, 134.7 pounds. Tonight, he makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Great Falls, Montana. Here's And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. Montana has an inactive athletic commission, so tonight's event is being regulated by the Outstanding Wyoming Commission, headed by Chairman Brian Pedersen and Executive Director Nick Meeker. The bell, round number one. Blue trunks for Drake Holes, green trunks for David Laredo. Immediately to the inside, on the underhook, there's the right hand thrown by Coles. Big right hand, and the left hand is separation. Laredo resetting. Laredo now coming forward off the one-two. There's the jab, counter left hook just off the mark. Just what he said was the counter. Left hand getting through. You can tell right away how fast Coles is with his counters. There's the counter left from Laredo, the reset now in the center circle for Drake Coles. Laredo pumping the jab, active head movement. Left hook, overhand right on the counter left hook. 115 remaining round number one. Double over hooks. Quick separation by referee Andrew Glenn. Left hook, counter right hand. 
left hand by Coles. Again, Coles said, I feel I have superior speed to David Laredo. I want to use that superior speed to land hard counters. Now coming forward, left hand, right hand. And you can see it's that speed right there that Coles is counting on. It's making a difference right now. Laredo needs to figure out a way to deal with that speed. Get inside, use that long jab. Not just stay in range and wait for his opponent to come back and counter. Just like that. Overhand right off the mark. To come forward off the lead left hook, David Laredo. There's the right hand again into the clinch. Double under hooks. Left hand. Right hand. Now the break called and received by referee Andrew Glenn. Step in on the jab left hook and into the clinch. Right hand left hook. That was cleanly landed by Drake Holes. Laredo took that shot very well. Laredo looks a little hurt there. He moved back a couple of steps. Hadn't seen him do that yet. Holes entry on the right hand. Big shot snap from Drake Holes. Full tie plum nearly snatched defensively by David Laredo. That ends round number one. Good round right there for Drake Holes. Showed what he has. Round number one. Good round right there for Drake Holes. Showed what he has. He's got that speed, and that's what he wants to utilize. That's what he did there. We talked to David Loretta. We felt like he's going to have the strength advantage on anybody in this way. Cross power. It feels like he can hit hard. Doesn't matter how hard you can hit, Sean, if you can't land on your opponent. It's supposed to be fast and countering well right now. Drake Holes is to keep that up. We have to Laredo, he might want to start working the body, trying to slow his opponent down a little bit. He cannot just continue to let his opponent stay on the outside and throw punches. See right here, you can see Coles doing what he does best, being very fast. Just a nice straight to the left hand that knock his opponent back. Here we see the end of the round, throwing just a nice little combination. A couple of those landed. Laredo did a good job of tying his opponent up right there. Best thing you can do when you get rocked. See if Laredo's able to figure out how to slow his opponent down a little bit. Both fighters up to scratch, three feet apart. Round number two underway. Hit forward pressure by David Laredo. Circling back, bouncing the step of Drake Coles. Coles jabbed to the body. Laredo trying to time that check left hook. Laredo needs to start being more offensive, getting off first. If he just sits there and waits back, he's going to get beat to the punch. The counter left hook from Laredo on the duck under to the clinch. Short right hand. Break, break. Step and on back, the turn. Step back clean. Knuckle up. We start again from Andrew Glenn on the inactive clinch. Coles now coming forward effectively right hand, left hand. Shots in the clinch now with the right hand from Drake Coles. Break, break. Step back. And right here is where Laredo needs to come out first and try to throw some shots to that body. Laredo cut outside of his left eye, closing stages of round one. That blood flowing freely from that cut. Here in round number two, 60 seconds remaining in the second round. And you can see Dracos is very strong on the inside, pushes the point around. You can see that wrestling base that he has. Fighting in the interim. Oh. Right hand and that drop. David Laredo. Walked Talk right into it. Andrew Glenn. I think he hit him while he was on the ground. I think that's what's going on right here. Over, nope, over as soon here. as Laredo's knee hit the ground, Coles hit him. And I think that's Doctor, what they're going to say Doctor, here. Doctor. It's just that instinct from an MMA background to jump on and hit your opponent Doctor. as he's falling down. Joe Riggs in the corner of his fighter, Drake Coles, on, talking to referee out. Andrew Glenn. Time called. Stay over there. Stay over there. On the ring apron, you see the chief Stay medical over officer. Stay over here. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, the immediate past president of the Association of Ringside Physicians. You, you can see Drake Holt is bouncing around, and he's ready to go. Dr. Don Muzi, and now Dr. Muzi coming over for the assessment. No, because he hit him afterwards. And you gotta love that. Loretto doesn't want to hear it. He wants to get back so out there and fight. For the foul. Doctor, check him out. See if he Let's can see continue or not. They're gonna just call this a hard yeah, warning, or what they're gonna do about it. There'll be a point assessment. Yeah. No, because he hit him after. Okay. So and go knockdown punch on the right hand. Oh, one point, taking a one point, point deduction. So one this point. is an illegal punch to one a grounded point. fighter. Coles dropping Laredo cleanly, and then following one that point. to the ground for the illegal down. punch. And Sean, they talk back. about that. Even if you You're miss, they want to start doing that, Time making in. sure people get the message. You cannot hit a fighter when he's on the ground. Thus, right now, that 10-8 round in favor of Coles becomes a 10-9 round in favor of Coles. Which could be a huge factor later on. The main thing was, though, Cole was able to get that knockdown by countering his opponent, 
And he's exactly what he's able to do. He's waiting for the right time. He's rocking back and throwing hard shots. The overhand right on the break, underhook. Break, break, break. No, hit. Watch it back in the head. Watch so it back in the head. Just wanted to score this 10-9 or 9-8. The way the two point gap becomes a one point gap on the right hand. Head, That's assuming head. no more knockdowns break, here in round number break, two. Step back, step back. The over under clinch. Losing seconds, round two. Next up, round three. So no dispute on the knockdown. It was the clean counter right hand by Drake Holes that drops David Laredo. It's the action look after. At it. Good right hand. It was just that last right, right hand that he threw. It was a good knockdown, but he was you clearly can see down. right here. Great down, counter right, right hand. Did the job, and that's right here. Now his hand's down. That's when that last punch went. His, his butt's already on the ground. The referee saw, and that's what it was for. Was it the other ones that he kind of threw as he was falling? It was when he was actually on the ground. Good call by the referee. So as your opponent is falling, it's the same under the ABC's unified rules of professional boxing. You're allowed to continue to strike, but once the opponent touches the canvas, any part of their body other than the soles of their shoes, then they become grounded, thus the illegal strike. And, and, and sometimes, maybe if he has a hand down or something, just a little bit, they might say, okay, you could see that, maybe it wouldn't get a point. I don't know, but when his butt's on the ground, they're gonna give it every time. Round number three. Let's see if Laredo's able to solve this. Like, like getting off first on some hard shots. So hard with how fast Drake holds is. Riddle on the outside, jab to the body. Entry pressure again from Drake Holes. Good defensive clinch by Laredo into the gable grip. But Laredo getting that grip, he's not utilizing. He's got to do some work on the inside. He's losing this fight. Right now, Chris, we're seeing a lot of defensive clinches from David Laredo. And you can see much better strikes landed and thrown right now for Coles. Higher percentage as well. On the underhook, left hand, right hand, counter right, then the left hand by Drake Holes. Drake Holes doing fantastic on this inside fighting. Laredo trying to come forward. Fighters in the center circle. Jab from Laredo. A counter hook from Coles. Laredo needs to start throwing some combinations. He's not going to win if he continues to try to throw one or two punches against a speedy opponent like this. 50 seconds remaining, round number three. Holes coming forward off the right hand, Laredo to the body. It's the jab, jab again, not getting through from Coles. And you can just see some of the steam right now is out of the punches for Laredo. He's throwing punches, but they don't quite have the pop on the dinner. Good jab from David Laredo. From Coles. And left from Laredo. Left hook. 20 seconds remaining, round number three. Hook not there. Loretto talked about those leaping left hooks. You saw one there, but it did not land. Very dangerous to start throwing punches like that against a smaller guy like this and speedy and fast. He can duck underneath and come back with combo. Straight one two from Coles. There's the bell next stop, round number four. David Loretto, in my opinion, he's got to figure out something. He's got to start throwing combinations, getting off first, pushing his opponent backwards. But he's got to do it in a careful manner. He can't just throw a jab and not step forward because the opponent will rock right back and come back with his own right hand. That's what that's what Drake has been doing so far. He's got to continue to push his opponent into the ropes if he can, working from there. Then he can't do as much. And here's just some good punches. You can see. Look at that head movement right there by Cole. This is a very frustrating style for someone like Ray coming in there, going against a very tough guy like Coles with that speed, that accuracy. I mean, being coached by Joe Riggs is Ray Coles, so you know he's educated on how he's going to fight for his style. Line, and and look at Ray Coles, seems to have a little smirk on his, on his face the entire time. He's having fun out there. Round number four. There's the right hand step in. Laredo continually being first. Coles continually landing fast, hard, clean counters. There, just like that. There was what I think Laredo needs to do. He can't just throw a punch. He's got to push forward when he throws those punches. And you saw the defensive gable grip from Laredo getting the separation, getting space. 
question now is, Chris, what does Loretto do with that space? That, you know, here's the thing. When he's getting on the inside, he needs to keep moving and pushing the power. Just like that, he can't just gable grip. You're losing this fight. You've got to mix it up and change it. That being said, he's taking a lot of clean shots, and he's, he, you can tell how tough David Loretto is. And you can see here the advantage each and every round for Coles right now. They're close. It's tight, but... Coles is landing more shots. Riddle losing his mouthpiece. Quick timeout by Andrew Glenn. No histrionics when the mouthpiece is reinserted in DKFC, just like in MMA. We don't deal with that. Unlike in professional boxing, right back in. I think that's at least your problem. A little bit of dirt from my canvas. Somebody's trying to put you in the face. Joe McCarthy often says, their water never disinfected anything. Mouthpiece <laughs> right back in. 40 seconds remaining, round four. The left hook getting through from David Laredo. A little better flurries right there for him. Looking a little better right here. Certainly in some combinations. Like him. Laredo has shown a lot of toughness, step pulling back, himself off of the it, canvas in round number two. A great holes and a lot of speed to this point in the fight. Off the counters in this 20 years old, his BKFC debut. I mean, and, and just great cardio. Doesn't look like he's tired at all. Doesn't look like he's slowing down at all. This cool. There's that leaping left hook again. Not there for David Laredo. That leaping look to the, is, is a now and again type of punch. You can't throw it too often, especially against a guy like Coles. Final seconds, round number four. There is the bell. We move to the fifth and final round. I mean, if you're in the corner of Coles right now, you have to say, just keep doing what you're doing. Be careful. Don't walk into anything stupid. You're winning this fight. Laredo needs to have a sense of urgency right now. He has to know he's losing this fight. He's got to continue to come forward and throw hard shots, no combinations. Look to land a big shot, whether that's that leaping left hook. Like I said, it's not a good all the time push. You have to just throw it every now and again. And I throw it to the body because he, he's too small. It's cold. He can duck too well. You have to throw it to the body, try to hit him and hurt him. Maybe with that liver shot, something to change the pace of this fight. A lot of toughness being shown by Laredo. He's been beat to the punch a lot. He started to show some good flashes of, of some good things in that last round. Like some good combinations, some inside fighting. And that's just him being tough and tenacious and it's taking him this fight, man, because he's, he's, he's dealt with a lot of adversity so far. Got a good cut on that left eye. Fifth and final round underway. A BKFC 44 opener where a great falls Montana. I mean, and Sean, it's just like every time we see Laredo come through right away, Cole's counter beautifully. 135 pounds, Drake Coles versus David Laredo, both making their BKFC debut. Overhand right, counter right hand, oh. and the left hand getting through. Forward pressure from Drake Coles. Coles again dropping David Laredo with that right hand on the counter in round two. Right, right. Then losing a point for the punch illegally as Laredo was then grounded. He was on the canvas. Watch the fingers, watch the fingers. Some states score that in 10-9. I was taught to score that in 9-8. Either way, Craig Coles wins that round, but he loses the two-point margin. Might matter, Chris. It might not matter. Well, I'm no judge, but I would think it's not going to matter. Moreno just showed a lot of toughness and hard just by being in this fight. By being, he's getting beat to the punch most of his time. There's that mouthpiece coming out again. Big shots from Drake Coles once more. Time call by Andrew Glenn. Laredo put it to it right away. I think he wanted a little bit of a break. He's right back in. Time at 45 seconds remaining in this fight. There's the jab, one, two, left hook, right hand. That is a clean four punch combination for Drake Holes. Oh. Big right hand. Dang. Another huge right hand in the left hand. Big shot from Coles. Tremendous toughness from Laredo. I love that rock bat that Coles does. He just rocks back a little bit and fires right back. When the jab's coming, he jumps, just get out of the way just enough to get not hit, and then he comes back with his own right hand. It's beautiful. Ray Coles appears to be cruising. Highly likely that the one-point deduction will be for not. We shall see. Assume nothing in combat sports judging. They're usually on point, though, here in Montana. Final seconds of this fight. There is the bell to the scorecards we go. Wow. What a what a tough fight right there, man. I mean, both guys doing good things right there. I thought Loreto 
showed so much toughness right there. Cole showed a lot of speed and just he didn't get tired at all. I mean, he doesn't look like he got hit at all in the face, really. Joe Riggs said that very well. He said, yeah, opponent's very tough. I think that's what he said, something like that. It's about to be tough. You know what I'm talking about, that in and out when he's pulling that out. You, you, you can't block your punch when he's bringing that back in. You did great. I'm proud of you. That's the fun thing about these guys at 135. A lot of times they're so fast, they're so accurate, they got a lot of speed. But even that being said, Ray Cole showed a lot of, of intangibles right there. It's going to be hard to deal with that. Explosiveness, in and out movement, the ability to have punches thrown at you, have your eyes still seeing what's coming and countering it immediately. That's impressive. Well, if Dre Coles wasn't the coolest kid at the University of Providence, Chris, I think he is now. Our strike stats presented by Bucked Up Energy Drink. And you can see here, 60% accuracy, one knockdown, 135 punches landed. I mean, great numbers right there for Dre Coles. I mean, Loretto did a good job as well, but man, he just had a very tough fight against a very fast, speedy, elusive opponent. A little bit more body punch. I mean, 94% accurate right there for Coles. But I mean, Loretto threw and landed a little bit well, he, he threw more. I guess he landed one last one. Here is Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, after completing the scheduled five rounds, our judges at ringside are all in agreement at 49-45. For your winner, by unanimous decision, Drake Coles! Great victory for Drake Coles. Sean, he looked fantastic out there. So, so much athleticism, speed. Accuracy, it looked like a very poised fighter for his first bare knuckle. David Laredo showed toughness, he showed heart, and Dre Coles showed a tremendous amount of ability at age 20 in this, not just his BKFC debut, his pro combat sports debut. Sharp, fast, quick on the counters, the knockdown in round number two to the win. Victorious by way of unanimous decision, Dre Coles defeats David Laredo. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all new library of content, including behind the scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Tonight only, you'll receive a free gift with any purchase of $25 or more at BareKnuckleShop.com. Check out the huge selection of merch to choose from, the sizes and styles for everyone. You can place your order now at BareKnuckleShop.com. And again, a reminder, if you spend $25 or more, you'll receive a free gift. So knuckle up at BareKnuckleShop.com. And we are back for the third time in Great Falls, Montana. BKFC 44 brought to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Only fans. Crescent Tools. And Lions Not Sheep Apparel. And now your Crescent Tools tell the tape. To the featherweight division we go. Dakota Greenwood versus Derek Gates. And you can see here Derek Gates has a three and a half inch reach advantage. He's going to utilize against Dakota Greenwood. Greenwood needs to get inside the lamp punches. Derek needs to keep him at bay each time, make him pay each time he steps close. This is bout number five in the sport of bare knuckle fighting for Derek Great Gates in his fourth promotionally in BKFC. Gates has also had 30 AMI MMA bouts. In our fighter meeting, Gates told us his main focus in training was on moving his head and better moving his feet. He said, I want to utilize my slips, my parries, keep returning every time the Coda Greenwood throws. And don't just go punch for punch, return in combination. Well, it wasn't just that. He said this is the most he's ever trained for a fight. He's actually in the gym all the time. Wasn't doing that before. 
So that's going to make all the difference, he feels like. He says he's going to be willing to fight inside, in the pocket, outside. He feels like he can do it all against his opponent. Dakota Greenwood set for bout number two in BKFC. He's had eight AMI MMA bouts, three in amateur boxing. Greenwood told us in this fight versus Derek Gates at 145 pounds, he wants to stay on the outside with high volume. But Greenwood said, I have to walk the line of not being overly defensive while still being tactically smart and aware. Learned a lot from his last fight. He said he wants to really work the body this time. Knows that slows people down, makes the fight a lot easier. One of the money he really wants to work that body all the time. Doesn't matter where at, got to get in there and slow his opponent down. Go to Greenwood said, I think Derek Gates is going to throw big shots. And I think when he throws and lands and I'm still in this fight, Derek Gates will mentally break. Feels like he has a cardio advantage. He says this time he's going to be on the gas the entire time with no breaks. Back we go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Presented to you by Mid 45. Introducing to you first. Fighting out of the red corner, tonight he wears white. He stands 5 feet 9 inches tall, his official weight at even 144 pounds. Tonight, he steps into the squared circle, ready for bare knuckle fight number 5. Fighting out of Eagle, Idaho, here is Derek the Bob Gates. And across the ring, his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black and white. He stands 5 feet 9 inches tall. His official weight, 145.7 pounds. Tonight, he steps into the squared circle for the second time. Fighting out of Kalispell, Montana. Here is Koda, the gladiator, Greenwood. And our referee in charge of the action, Bobby Wombacher. Derek Gates told us he feels his opponent, Coda Greenwood, is very durable, but he said he is also very hittable. Round number one. Black trunks for Coda Greenwood, white trunks for Derek Gates. It's with the long jab. Gates got to be careful. He's got those hands down right away. It's extremely low for Gates, but coming forward with big shots comes Derek Gates. Counter overhand right from Greenwood. Greenwood on the outside. Long jab from Gates. Greenwood cut top of his right brow. Stiff jab right hand nearly an illegal backhand from Derek Gates. More of a flail though. I don't think there was the illegal intent there. Gates stalking pressure throws the naked two to the entry. Shots on the inside. Greenwood with his back against the ring ropes down the corner cushion. And look at Gates with those hands down. Gotta be careful. Can't get too cocky. Might get hit and hurt. More oh. big shots. Knocked down number one. Here comes the count from Bobby Wambacher. Oh, he still looks hurt, does Greenwood. Greenwood now taking the mandatory eight. You've got to think Gates is going to want to jump all over him right now. Sporting touch of hands. 55 seconds remaining, round number one. Gates left hand, right hand. More big shots, left hand, and that drops Coda Greenwood for the second time in this fight. Greenwood looks very hurt still. Six, seven. He's not eight, getting up, I don't think, Sean. The count of 10 reached, and Derek Gates has his first win with emphasis in BKFC. And Sean, Derek Gates told us he's really been training this. This is the most he's ever trained, and it showed right there. He came out there. You could tell by the way he was carrying his hands. He was confident in what he could do. He, his eyes were there. He could see the punches coming, and that's what happened. He just landed a lot of good shots on a very tough Cody Greenwood, who showed a lot of toughness in his first fight. Phenomenal offensive performance for Derek Gates. Exploding off of scratch, immediately seizing control of this fight, putting Coda Greenwood on the defense. Coda Greenwood literally played defense that entire fight. Ironic because Greenwood said he did not want to be overly defensive. Gates, though, just physically imposing his will. Huge shots. 
Hard here. and clean. Clean that right was, hand. It did the damage from the beginning. You can see Koda covering up after that, but it was that clean right hand that did the damage. And here's a second with another good punch. There. And look at that uppercut right there. It's those ones that you don't see, Sean, that do the damage right there. And when you're getting punched, was covered up, had the hands over his face right there, had his head down, did Greenwood, and that uppercut landed. He didn't see it coming ever. And that's the one, if you don't see him coming, you can't brace. If you can brace, you can understand you know it's coming, you're fine. But when you don't see it, those are the ones that hurt. Chris, of course, bare knuckle is such an offensive sport. Derek Gates sees the offense. Cody Greenwood, again, put back defensively, really had no choice as Gates unloading shots all the way to the finish. Here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Bobby Wambacher, reaches the count of 10 at 1 minute 20 seconds into round number one. For your winner by KO, Derek the Bot Gates. And Sean, you can see when Derek Gates is training, when he's in the gym, he's a different fighter. He can totally turn around. I like to see him fight again, being in the gym all the time. Coda Greenwood wanted to stay long, but Derek Gates solved that distance to the inside. Big, hard, clean punches. Two knockdowns to the knockout in round number one. Victorious by way of first round KO, Derek Gates defeats Coda Greenwood. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all new library of content, including behind the scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Tonight only, you'll receive a free gift with any purchase of $25 or more at BareKnuckleShop.com. Check out the huge selection of merch to choose from, the sizes and styles for everyone. You can place your order now at BareKnuckleShop.com. And again, a reminder, if you spend $25 or more, you'll receive a free gift. So knuckle up at BareKnuckleShop.com. Crescent Tools brings you our tale of the tape for this bout in the cruiserweight division. Leo Bercier versus Willie Sears. And you can see here, Sean, that we have a two-inch height advantage and a two-inch reach advantage for Willie Sears. He knows that Leo Bercier has to come in and throw hard shots. He's got to keep him away using that jab, using that one-two. Stay long against a tough, heavy-handed guy like Leo. This is bout number two in BKFC for Willie Sears. His third overall in the sport of bare knuckle fighting. Sears has also had three pro MMA bouts. Sears told us in our fighter meeting his main focus in training is on improving his defense. He said, by improving my defense, I want to utilize constant movement, quickly work to the inside, land punches, then right back smartly and safely to the outside. You talked about in and out motion, Sean, in and out. Lots of body shots when he gets in there. Wants to do exactly what he can to be first and be aggressive at all times. Willie Sears said of his opponent in this cruiserweight bout, Leo Bercier, I really respect his power, but I think he's going to try to be a power counter striker. Therefore, Sears said, it's of the utmost importance that I am continually first and first with authority. Well, and Sears said he doesn't like fighting somebody else's hometown. He wants no judges on this. He's going for the knockout. 
two wins at BKFC for Leo Bursier. His most recent occurred September of last year. He defeated Brian Maxwell by second round KO. And you can just see the experience when you see Leo right here. He doesn't waste any punches, doesn't waste any motion. Very smart, accurate fighter. He waits for the right time. Look at that, just waited, saw an opening through that overhand right. He's powerful, he's got power in both hands. Like we talked about, just understanding when and where he needs to use his energy right there. Just hitting his opponent with a lot of hard shots. But like it's saying, he's smart about it. He doesn't waste punches. He doesn't waste energy. He's defensive when it needs to be. He's offensive when it needs to be. He waits for the right time. He hits his opponent with hard shots. You see the smile from Leo Bercier, hugely popular here in his home city, Great Falls, Montana. This is bout number four in BKFC for Bercier. He's had 31 pro MMA bouts, 29 in pro boxing. Bercier was a cast member on season 17 of The Ultimate Fighter. Bercier, who is a very smart, very cerebral, tactical fighter, said, I want to be tight with my jab, I want to showcase excellent fundamentals, and I want to be aggressive, but not wild. Well, he said he wants to be tighter with everything, though, not just that jab, but he wants to be very in, much in control, wants to be accurate, he wants to be aggressive and push the pace, but he's got to do it in a smart way. Of his opponent, Willie Sears, Versier said, I think he's going to be really aggressive from the start. I think that I can take his big shots, then settle in and start to land my own shots. Punching accuracy, for me, Versier said, is one of my keys to victory. He feels like he's so much better offensively, but defensively is the main thing. He wants to slip, he wants to parry, he wants to get out of the way and make his opponent pay every time he misses him. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the cruiserweight division. Presented to you by Lions Not Sheep Apparel. Introducing to you first, fighting of the red corner. Tonight he wears green. He stands six feet, one inch tall. His official weight, 206.5 pounds. Tonight, he steps into the squared circle, ready for bare knuckle fight number three. Fighting out of Mount Sterling, Illinois, here is Willie Sears. And across the ring, his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black and silver. He stands five feet, 11 inches tall. His official weight, 204.9 pounds. His BKFC record stands at two victories opposite a single defeat. Fighting out of Great Falls, Montana, here is Leo Bercy. And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. Leo Bercier told us what gives me great confidence as a fighter is that I feel that I have the ability to land a clean power punch literally at any moment in the fight. Round number one, sporting touch of hands. Black trucks for Leo Bercier, green trucks for Willie Sears. I said Leo doesn't necessarily waste any punches as he, he just lays back a little bit or tries to get an early knockout. It's the left hook from Sears. Stiff jab, here, right hand, and that drops Willie Sears. And that answers that question, Sean. He's going for this knockout. Beautiful punch right there. Just stepped in with that right hand. Let's see how, how hurt Sears is right now. Let's see if Leo tries to step on the gas. Tries to go for the knockout right now. He might want to get some ring time in. We don't know. We'll find out. No rushing from Bersier. Bersier off the jab. Just missing with the right hand. Counter left from Sears. It's the overhand right, another big right hand, left hand. And Sears those... took that well. Right hand knocked down number two. Flat on his back goes Willie Sears. I was about to say, those punches are so close, you can just tell. If Sears gets up, he's got to be careful because those right hands are coming. If he gets clipped by another one, this fight's over. Step over here. Surprise that Sears is fine right there because he took some Come massive on. shots right there. He's got to be very careful right now. He better clinch, do something, because if he just slowly tries to stay out there and punch, he's going to get knocked out. Referee Andrew Glenn taking a really close look at these huge shots. The end could be near. The slip ruled a double slip. We fight on. 
Bersier coming forward. Sears with his back against the corner cushion. Overhand right from Bersier. Big shot, Sears still throwing, takes that left hook. Half tie plum now from Bersier. Sears off of the jab from the southpaw stance. Now switching orthodox in the gap, takes Ooh. the right hand, knockdown number three. Four. Willie Five. Sears is tough. He continues Six. to Seven. get up. Eight. Let's see if he gets up here. Nine. Oh, he passed. Ten. He, he, he waved it off. And ten in. Game set match, Leo Bersier. I was impressed with the way that Willie got up from a couple of hard knockdowns. And he was throwing back well there. He did some good things in there, but it was just too much, Leo. Leo Bersier has had success in pro MMA. He has had success in pro boxing. And he is now having great success in BKFC. That is his third victory in four fights. I almost did. And Leo I, I mean, hit. just continues I to get it. better. Look at how economical he was with seven. the punches right there. He didn't waste any shots. Eight. He waited for the right time. He led hard shots. And just look at that. Just great defense. Not moving out of the way. Just, oh, came in with a hard right hand. That was a beautiful shot. And like I said, I am very impressed that Sears got up from that one, let alone the next one. And then look, Sears still coming, firing shots. He's still trying to win this fight. Still thinks he has a shot. That was a beautiful shot right there. I mean, Leo just has power in both hands look at that nice clean shot I mean, that's why i was saying you could tell his shots were just missing by inches right there and sears wasn't showing a head movement to get out of the way and this is just another hard right hand i mean that was at the end of a good flurry between both guys and, and, and i think sears has had enough he took too many hard shots willie sears showing tremendous toughness and character Twice pulling himself off of the mat from those massive punches of Leo Bersier. But Bersier, methodically relentless. He talked about punching accuracy, Chris. His punching accuracy was phenomenal with huge power behind it. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn, reaches the count of 10. At 1 minute 55 seconds into round number one. For your winner, by K. Leo Bersier! And Sean, another very impressive for, and performance by Bersier right there. Showed a lot of power. The guy just keeps getting better at bare knuckle. I'd like to see him fight again for us very soon. Leo Bersier said he wanted to be aggressive, not wild. That is textbook. Aggressiveness without being wild. Three knockdowns of Willie Sears to the victory. The winner by way of first round knockout, Leo Bersier defeats Willie Sears. Tonight is Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. We're in Great Falls, Montana. Sold out tonight, our third time in this city, our fourth time in this great state. This is a gorgeous state. It's such an underrated fight state, but Joe Riggs is here. We talk about Todd Foster, who you will see in the corner, Billy Wagner. Todd Foster was the United States Boxing Olympian at Seoul in 1988. There are high-level gyms in this city throughout the state of Montana. You don't hear a lot on the national, indeed the international, fight scene about Montana, but when you're here, you realize just how important combat sports are to the culture of this state. Sean, it's amazing. There's not many people here. There's 60,000, and you have a lot of high-level fighters that come out of these gyms you're talking about, but it helps when you have a guy like Joe Diesel Riggs. He comes over here, and he's changed a lot of the mindset for a lot of these young guys. They come over here, and they've seen him fight on TV many times, and they go, well, this guy could do it, and he's here teaching me I could do it, and he just changes the whole culture. So these guys believe in what he's telling them. They listen, and they're coming out, and they're performing. They're doing a great job. We have a lot of tough fighters out here, but the main thing is these guys come to fight. You see the QR code on your screen? Again, if you don't know how to do that, find a kid, find someone <laughs> under 20. They will tell you to do it, but it's very simple. You can scan that. Simple as well. You can go onto the app. You can also go to BKFC.com. That is how you get our fight. Our main card begins tonight. Eight fights in total coming to you from sold-out Great Falls, Montana. We culminate 
with two fighters from right here in Great Falls. The winner becomes the inaugural BKFC 145-pound world champion. Chris, this is really intriguing. Kai Stewart versus Louis Lopez. Yeah, it's great because these guys do not like each other. They haven't liked each other for a long time. Uh, this would be a fight that's supposed to happen many times, but they're going to try and put it on here in front of their hometown. This is going to be fantastic. And whoever wins, it's great. They're going to be the title holders, Sean. BKFC 44 at the top of the hour. Right now, we take you back to Omaha with the best of BKFC 43. Straight punches, going for it, straight right hand, and down goes Noah Cutter. And not surprising, Noah Cutter seems to get dropped in every fight. Man, that's a nasty cut right there, though. I don't know if he's getting up, he's hurt. This is the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship debut for Corey Roberts. TJ Benson set for bout number three in BKFC. Round number one. Takes the up from scratch for TJ Benson. Back and forth momentum here in round number one. The momentum with Corey Roberts to the body. Yeah. Look those hard shots back to where he was anyway. Left hook, right hand, right hand. 15 seconds remaining round number two, and that is knockdown number two. Oh. <laughs> Left to the body, right hand. More big shots. For your winner, by K. Centers 1-0 in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Jacquees Williams from here in Omaha, Nebraska, is set to make his Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship debut. Knuckle up! Round number one, there's that immediate forward pressure from Esteban Rodriguez. He's in the black and red trucks, blue and yellow trucks with Jacquees Williams on the outside playing all defense. Big shots from Esteban Rodriguez. Furious to the body goes Rodriguez. Rodriguez Williams nearly turning his back. Was knocked out in that floor and now piece in right back to it. Esteban Rodriguez can see the finish line trying to reach it immediately here in round number one. A ferocious pace set by Esteban Rodriguez. That's what we need to do when he's in that position. He's got to tie up. He cannot get ducked and covered like he's doing right there. The spin, knockdown number three. For your winner by TKO and still undefeated. You see the split, South African, the United States flag being adorned by Tommy Stratum. Josh Krejci, 1-0 in BKFC. He's had four pro MMA bouts. <laughs> throwing big in the clinch. Hard right. on the underhooks. Krejci's still throwing active clinch. That's why referee Joe Doherty is letting this go. Break, break, break. <laughs> Through left hook, counter left hand. Oh, up. Right hand on the inside. Short right hands in return from Tommy Strada. Richie talked to us about establishing his one twos. Entry left hand. And that will be ruled a clean knockdown, the second of this fight. For your winner by KO and still undefeated, Tommy the Farmer Strada. Adrice Wasi set for bout number three in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. This is bout number three in BKFC for Jeff Souter. There's the right hand from Wasi. That's a good right hand to the body, my son. This is certainly the most poised, the most relaxed, the most in control we've seen Adrice Wasi. Souter to the body. Wasi exploding forward. Wasi's corner telling him, get off the ropes. Jab. Right hand. Big left, right hand. Counter right hand from Idris Wasi looking for the level change. Here's the floor now on the inside from Jeff Souter. Jeff Souter! The French Canadian from Quebec City, Jean Masson Wall. Taylor Starling set for bout number five in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Short right hands, excellent right hand from Hassan Wong, and another right hand. So Wong continues to fake those level changes. There's the level change, entry right hand. They were starting that forward from the center circle, measuring the right hand. Big right hand from Sean Hassan Wong. Thirty-five 
five seconds remaining for round four. Right hand counter, right hand from Taylor Sterling. By unanimous decision, Shad Masson. This is the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship debut for Andrew Potter. Ryan Braun. Want to know when BKFC? Fighters up to scratch, three feet apart. Round number one. Fast start up from scratch for Ryan Braun. In the red trucks and drops Andrew Potter. He's in the black trucks. So he doesn't look like he's getting up. For your winner by KO and still undefeated, Ryan Battle Ready Elvin Burrito. Set for his ninth fight in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. The undefeated Carlos Trinidad Snake fighting here in his home city, Omaha. decision and still undefeated Carlos Trinidad Snake Jeremy Sauceda enters 1-0 in BKFC Alonzo Martinez 2-0 in BKFC there's the good left hand on the turn from Sauceda Sauceda to the bottom Get up. three on the right hand So, the Mexican Rhino Martinez. Brandon Meyer enters 1-0 in BKFC. Sean Wilson, three fights in BKFC. I like the body shot right here. Decision, Sean Peter Wilson from Tajikistan, now based in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Bezad Usmanov, Jimmy Rivera, set for bout number two in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Jesus. To the body on the hook from Rivera, right to the body. Big shots from the half tie plug from Jimmy Rivera on the overhand right. Another from Rivera. Big right hand, straight right hand again from Jimmy Rivera. Jab again from the fighter from Tajikistan, Bezad Usmanov. And those level changes are hard to deal with. Jimmy El Terror Rivera. Noah Cutter set for his ninth bout in the sport of bare knuckle fighting, his eighth promotionally in BKFC. Dakota Cochran. Set for fight number seven in the sport of bare knuckle. There's the explosion in after the patience. Good left hand. Straight punch is coming for it. Straight right hand. And down goes Noah Cutter. And not surprising, Noah Cutter seems to get dropped in every fight. Man, that's a nasty cut right there, though. I don't know if he's getting up. He's hurt. For your winner by KO, Dakota Cochran. Draped in the flag of his native South Africa, Jeremy Smith. You hear the ovation for Houston Alexander. This is his home city, Omaha, Nebraska. Overhand right, counter right hand, and that drops Jeremy Smith. 50 seconds remaining in a ferocious round number one. Right hand again on the entry. Big shots on the inside. Alexander to the inside in the clinch. Short right hand, left hand, left hand, right hand again. He's dipping his head, throwing big.
forward right now and land a hard shot. It's coming forward with the right hand. Shades of Fry versus Takayama. Fry, this is phenomenal. And still undefeated, Houston, the assassin, Alexander. Don't send anyone you want, but don't send anyone you want back. I'm number one.